Hi guys, welcome again to the second video of our mini blog series. So, as I said in the last video, we were going to create the models on on blog application. But before reaching, I forgot to include something that's going to be like something that is very very important to set up and to learn, which is Git and version control. So for now, we are going to create a Git and a version control. And even if this is like a simple project, this is going to be a good, so important and you're going to use everywhere. So it's going to make to be very good for you that you learn now the basics of uh, Git and version control. So what are you going to do? Uh, what is Git and version control? Basically, since uh, when you start the project and you develop the project, you can actually, along the project, create like saves of uh, this project. We can call these yes, checkpoints. In uh, every step of the project, you can like save and like come back in, uh, in the point where you saved and uh, you can uh, actually edit and so this is like something that is very good to save or work as you could but uh, it's going to be much more useful when you are actually collaborating with uh, other developers in uh, another project so yeah it's very important to learn this so let's learn this okay so for this we have the comment we are going to use git init and uh, again like uh, the last video i used the main setup command you can like follow these ones on the video but what i recommend you is to always create like uh, to save in the notes like initial setup like command commands what uh, that you have to run every time so every time that you set up like a project i have like the already the comments which I know now by art but in the beginning it's useful to know what are the comments create environment or to activate or to use git so yes just save that on the notes you're going to use so many times and you're going to know them by art so where I was okay let's say git init initialize empty repository here okay so as you can see so you have created like uh, here this git repository here so what actually i always recommend is to uh, let me check here we are here blog mini blog yes just create here new file a dot git ignore so what is a dot git ignore so that's easy so a git ignore file it's a file where you put like uh, the files here that uh, you don't want to uh, save in the remote directory so for example imagine that you have like a file here that might create here a new file for example and example dot env okay so you have this file you have like uh, important paths like uh, that one db password that we are going to use that in the future for sure and you have like passwords that uh, they are important to assess your database for example or any other infrastructure and you don't want to share these ones with the world for example if you push the project in uh, the git um, repository in the remote repository everyone is, go is going to have access to this file so we don't want that that we have uh, access to this file so in our git ignore we are just going to say the files that we don't want to push to 
the remote repository. So we are going to add like these files and uh, a lot more files. Okay, but these we can actually delete because this is just an example. And uh, along the way, you are going to add here the files that you had ignore. Most of the time, they are the same. These like node models if you are using npm or uh, the dot env but something that uh, i just recommend is to go to search for git ignore in uh, google and you say like git ignore django template because this is going you are going to find like already templates that you can ignore for specific projects that you are working. For example, we don't want to play that base and the dot env. Okay, so you can just copy like this or like this. You paste here. And yes, so this file, like for example, that one, the dot env, we don't want to update that file for a database, so uh, Git will just ignore. Okay, so these are the steps. So every time that uh, you create a Git, we are going to, as long as you could, we are going to add the files. For example, when I use the command git status, I'm going to check the files that I did and uh, I haven't saved. So I'm safe all of them. So for a long time, you do git add to add to a staging area. And, uh, and after you add these files, you have to commit them. This is going to actually save them. So for that, use the command uh, git commit dash m that stands for message and uh, let's say here first commit hey, this is really the standard for the first commit that you do so you did nothing yet commit okay because here I use like the git stats but I think I didn't add anything so to add all the files that are not targeted, you do git add all. And now you do git commit m first commit. And now, as you can see, all our files have been committed. So if you see now git status, there is nothing that had changed. So for example, let's say that we do like we change online in the code, for example, let's say that we also want to untrack ENV. If you do like uh, git stats, there is, you see that we have modified the file that is not saved. So what you are going to do almost all the time, we are going to do git add all, it, uh, it's only a dot. You can uh, also add uh, files based on the directive that you are working, but in the beginning, git all dot, it's completely fine. So you commit, let's do a second commit to actually telling what we did, that we can say we have edited the git ignore, git uh, ignore file. And uh, yeah, so now what worked is uh, saved. So, next thing that uh, <coughs> we have to do is actually to go to our GitHub. If you haven't created the GitHub account, we just create a new one and let's create a repository. So, there is a lot of ways to go, but you go like here, your repositories, and you have all of them that you created. You put here like a new one. So let's say, let's call it the mini blog. Here you can let like public or private if you prefer like that way. 
here we are already add our uh, git ignore file so we don't have to change this we don't have to change it we don't care for a description at this point and uh, we create a repository now okay so they gave us some instructions in um, how we have to set up that we are ready uh, initialize our git in the project so the only thing that we have to do is to push um, is to push in the remote repository so what you are going to do very simple you click like this that's going to copy all these commands you can do one by one but you can just copy and you passed all of them so as you can see we add the origin this project we create like a new branch in uh, that's going to be Nate name uh, main and now we are going to push in a remote repository okay so meh, that's it for example now you just have to refresh and you see that uh, our blog like our application that it's uh, that we have developed here it's actually already on uh, it's actually already here in uh, the in github okay that's it so now we can just start to code and uh, each time that uh, we do something we are going to do the same thing we are going to use git at all are going to say git commit um, something and uh, we commit the, the save and after to synchronize with the remote repository you just have to do git push and uh, it's going to push to push that to a remote repository from our local to remote okay but this is the basic but what i want to do is already to set up uh, git to work in a collaborative environment because as i said it's going to be very important it's a so simple thing and uh, if you don't know it's going to make you some trouble at least in the beginning when you start to work if um, you never worked before so let's actually to work with the branch so if you do like git branch you can actually see the branch that uh, we have now we only have one branch which is that one main and uh, i just want to tell you a little bit how it works so the git flow in uh, the collaborative environment we actually have three main branch we have like the main branch where the, our uh, project in production it's going to live and uh, but it was only we don't uh, edit uh, the code directly in the main branch so we have like the main branch the developer branch and the feature branch it's going to look like this okay I open like an image so you can see how it's going to work but now we have like a better image so okay we have like the main branch is the one that uh, we have created but as you know in collaborative environment there's going to be a lot of people working in the code for example someone's going to develop the uh, blog feature someone is going to develop the authentication feature another one's going to work in the imagine we have like transaction features for shopify or something like this and uh, if everybody is going to edit the code in the main branch it's going to be a mess so what we want to do we each time we work uh, on a project we create a new branch that uh, 
it's going to be like a double a duplicate of the main branch and we are going to name the develop and in the develop branch it's where we can develop actually the code that we are doing if you are like a small team or a project of your own you don't need even need the features but what's going to do you actually work in the develop branch so you can like do a commit here commit here do see if everything it is okay and if everything it's okay you can actually merge again the develop to the main branch and uh, what's going to happen is the main branch will synchronize all the code development that you did here so so in the future you can again like pull or to get the main uh, branch in the develop and you can start to develop more like new features in the develop branch if you're like a lot of people so imagine like uh, person one is going to work in the blog person two is going to work in the authentication feature so you actually like you create a new branch from the develop and you are going after to merge the new features in the develop so after you finish your blog and you see that everything is good you just put again the, um, the code you merge the code into the develop after the guy that was working in the authentication feature is going to put the code on the develop uh, branch and after the two of you were finished and uh, everything is good to put online you are going to merge it again to the main okay so the git flow is very easy we have like the main the develop features so you you fork not fork but you pull that code for like the develop after you create another branch in the feature that you are working and after when everything is done we are going to merge in the develop and uh, you are going to merge after in the main so this is actually what you're going to do so because as i say it's so simple and it's very important to to understand this to actually to work in uh, with other people in uh, companies in a, a collaborative environment so now we are here in our main branch and let's start to create our develop branch so to create a, a new branch it's very easy we just have to add the command git branch plus the name of the branch so let's say develop and you click enter and again if you think it's too much comment for you just uh, take some notes and uh, add uh, these comment these comments in on note or uh, some notes app or even paper anything that you want but take some notes of this this is important and uh, okay we have now created a new branch so to see your branch to this is the git branch is a command to check all the branch so now as you can see we have the main branch and the develop branch so we have created the new branch but uh, we are not yet on uh, our develop branch so as actually we have like the asterisk here which says that we are in the main branch and we want to work in our develop branch so for this you are using to use another command not this so it's going to be git checkout and uh, here we add after the checkout the name of the branch that we want to change and now we switch to the develop branch so if you do like here git branch you are in uh, the develop mode the develop branch and uh, yes so now we can code edit all the change that are going to be reflected in the develop but uh, not in the main and uh, after what we're going to do is to merge like the develop in the main 
but since you want to be like uh, the most professional possible so we are also going to create a feature branch so uh, I show you like a command to create a branch but as you saw we had to use like two commands one to create a branch and one to change with the git checkout we can actually use this command is git checkout dash b and now that b stands for branch and uh, now you can uh, like create the branch the feature another branch that you want so let's going to name that one features blog so we tap that command so as you can see we have not only create that feature uh, branch but we already switch directly to that one so the git checkout dash b and the name of the branch it's uh, an easy way to create a new branch and to switch uh, to that branch okay so i think uh, this video it was it's uh, already a little long and uh, extensive but again very very important for the future i prefer that you know that directly that you set up like the git and you work now in other projects all times with uh, git because it's going to be so much important and so useful in the future so let's start to do this do this more time to commit uh, to try to not forget to commit uh, in uh, all the little change that we do to our code so we can actually start to be better developers so i will end uh, the video for now and now we have everything set up so in the next video we can uh, actually start to code some uh, features of our blog app so that's it guys if you enjoyed that video uh, share like um, and subscribe and see you in the next one